Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be looking at Nats Part 2. And specifically, we're going to do a very simple example of a publish and subscriber. And what it means is that we're going to be able to publish or send a message and have a subscriber or someone who's interested in that message receive it. But before we get into all of that example, well, um, I have to tell you something. In the previous video, I sort of lied to you. So, and that was so that I could simplify the explanation of how things are different based, um, you know, on how we used to do things in terms of when you connect microservices together and how things are done in with messaging. So NATS is all about messaging. And so while the image I showed previously about, you know, all the services connected to NATS is exactly true, what I said is that service one wants to send a message or communicate with, let's say, service seven, it would just somehow talk to service seven. And that's not entirely true. Service, the services that are talking to NATS are all clients. They're just clients of, of NATS. And they really don't know about each other in terms of their names. What they do is they use a topic to communicate. Now, in my previous illustration, it would seem as though in order for service one to send a message to service seven, this message would have to contain like who it's being sent to, service seven, and where it came from, service one. And then of course, the data or payload. But there is a message that is sent. Remember, I said NATS is all about messaging, but NATS take care of the from and to. And you'll see how in a But remember, I said NATS is all about messages, and every service that connects to NAT is just a client. So when we were previously saying service one, well, that's, that's a client to NATS. And service seven is just another client to NATS. We could say it's client one and client seven but they're just all clients. Now, why is this important? Or why is there this distinction that you need, we need to clarify? So here is a simple illustration of how NAT does message exchange. When a client wants to receive a message, it simply says that it's gonna to subscribe to a subject. So in this example, we can see that there's a subject food at bar and it has several clients who have subscribed for messages that would come on that subject. The other clients can then send message to that subject. Which clients? Well, any clients, really. We don't know. All we know is who's interested in the message should it show up on this subject. And so in a way, NAS is really only going to, you can think of it, create a subject if they're interested parties or their subscribers. So what happens if there's a client who is sending or publishing message on a subject and there are no subscribers? Well, that's not an error. That's okay. Nats just simply drop the message. We'll see later on that though Nats can also persist the message. Now, here's an analogy. When we create a channel in Go, we can have any number of Go routine write message or data, write data to that channel. And then we could have any number of go routine read data from that channel. The channel acts as a way of decoupling the writers and receivers, right? And we don't need to worry about who's writing the data or how many go routines are writing the data when we're reading. And again, similarly, the publishers or producers of data to a Go channel don't really care about how many other Go routines are reading from the channel. It is either that it can publish a message or it can't. And when it tries to publish it, there's no room, then it simply gets blocked. Um, the only difference between the default way NATS does messaging versus Go channel is that when you write a message to or send data on a Go channel, if there's no one there to receive it, the message stay in the channel. 
by default, Nats will just simply drop the message or discard it if there are no subscribers listening or waiting for that message. So keep that in mind. Again, there's a feature in Nats called Jetstream that we can enable to be able to tell Nats to operate like a Go channel operates, where it just keeps the message even if there are no subscribers. So that way, a publisher could be publishing, one, several publishers could be publishing to a topic, to a subject, sorry, and then the message would be persistent. And then later on, when the clients come online, they would find those messages there, okay? So it would operate like a Go channel operates. And you can see that oh, Nats allow you to have many, many, many subjects. And you, there's a naming convention, which we we're gonna cover much later. But you can see a second example here is that payment that post subject. We have the client S8 who's interested in messages that would be sent on this subject. Or sent to the subject and so that's when that records and any number of services any number of services could then send messages on that subject and s8 would get it and s8 doesn't care which service sent those message it doesn't need to know so it's decoupled similarly the client s1 is interested in messages sent to order that sent topic it doesn't know when those messages are going to show up it doesn't know who would send it it could come from S8, it could come from S4, any other client that show up can send a message or publish a message to the subject order that's sent and it would be delivered to the client S1. All right, so now that's out of the way, um, let's now start talking about some code so we can see this example. So we're gonna start off by setting up our directory. And so within my going to run directory, I have a directory called Nats, section 27, and I make a directory called episode 02 within Nats, because in episode one, we only talk about installation. We didn't write any code. So there's a first bit of code. Then I change to that directory, and I'm going to create a directory called example one with two children, right? Or you could think of it, I'll create two directories, publisher and subscriber, and the parent, they have the common parent, the common parent, example 01. So either way, so basically I'm making, um, you know, three directories here in one go. And the minus P there is to create parents if they need to. All right. And the end result is that when I run the tree command, I see example 01 with two subdirectories, which is exactly what that make directory command does for us. After we make our directory, we of course CD into the example one directory. And I'm going to create a go init file with a module name. I use awesome <laughs> for some reason for a while now I've been using it and that's what I stick with. And then we will start up our VS code. And that's it. So now we're ready to write some code. Um, but before we um, write anything in VS code, let's um, get the latest NATS client library. So you can use the go get command and github.com forward slash NATS.io forward slash NATS.go forward slash at latest. Now you want to do the forward slash at latest because otherwise it's going to get a much older, it can make get a much older version of NATS. So just, just run the command like this. Now let's go to our VS Code. So in VS Code, we're going to start with our publisher. So of course, we're going to create a main.go file in the publisher directory. I could have started with the subscriber tool. It wouldn't matter because like I showed, NATS doesn't, it doesn't matter to NATS. If we wrote the subscriber first and we run it, it would just simply sit there waiting for a message to arrive on the subject it's interested in. But we will start here in this example, um, with our example, with the publisher to show that how the publisher is going to be there sending messages one after the other, one after the other, it's going to send an hello world message and nothing is going to happen because there's no one interested in it and there's not an error either. For the publisher, it's just going to keep sending message. It doesn't expect a response anyway. We'll talk about reply messages in the future. We're keeping it simple. We're just simply, publisher just sends out a message, keeps sending a message every second, we'll see. And then later on, we'll have a subscribe, subscribe to that message, to, on that subject to get the message that was sent by the publisher. And so we start with a main. And then we'll import Nats client. Let's just focus on the main function now because import is not important or interesting really. We'll use the NAT um, package to create a connection. The NAT.connect function accepts several parameters. The first one which is required is the URL to your NAT server. 
And here we're going to use the default URL, which is basically local host and the port where in that server is running. So this should work without any change. If you just start up the NAT server, everything should um, work. The other options are some other connection information, which we're not going to pass. The connect function returns a connection um, object and an error. So we will capture that. And of course, we will test to make sure that our, you know, we don't have an error connected to the NAT server, because if we can't connect to our NAT server, then we shouldn't try to do anything, right? So in that case, we'll just say fatal, can't connect to NAT server. If that goes well, we can then sit in a for loop where we keep sending messages to or publishing messages. And that's very easy. We simply do NATS connection that published. Very easy. Once we have a connection, we can publish to it. And what do we need to publish a message? Well, we really need the subject name, which is just a string. And like I said, NATS is agnostic to whatever you send in, it's just data. So it's just some bytes. So we can say that oh, we're sending to the subject called intros. And, and since we need a slice of bytes as the data, what should we send? Well, like I said, we're just going to send hello world. So that's a string. So we'll just take hello world and cast it as a slice of bytes. So that's pretty much all we need to do to send a message um, on to a topic. Now, the other thing we should do is since we have opened up a connection, we should probably close it. And so we can do the for um, closing this connection when main exit. Um, the other thing is that notice that if we were to just sit in the loop without any delay, as soon as we send one message, we'll send another message. And that would be pretty fast and a lot of messages. So right now we don't need to do that. So let's just put a little delay and send a message every second. Finally, this is what our entire application looks like for the publisher, just to send a message, right? Um, not very complicated. And basically, it's, if you take out all the error messages and so on, it's not a lot. It's make a connection, close it, um, it when the program ends it, and otherwise just publish a message. So let's go to the command line and test our application. As you can see, I have my NAT server running at the top and on the bottom left here, I'm going to do go run in the publisher directory. And you can see it's in a for loop and it's trying to publish a message, sleep for one second and keep doing that. Now, if you actually want to see that they would publish, you can add some checks to make sure it's all published, doesn't return an error. Print it out if you like. You can also add a print statement within the for loop so you can see that it is publishing. So those are all things you can do. So we'll leave that running. And then now let's go and write our subscriber. So it can receive these messages that are being published or sent by the publisher to the subject. So let's start our subscriber by creating a main.go file in the subscriber directory. And then let's now use the same code that we wrote for the publisher. So we'll copy that and paste it into the subscriber main.go file. So once we paste that, now let's just focus on the main function within the subscriber. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we should do is get rid of the for loop. And the reason why is because the way NATS client works is that once we subscribe to a topic, it's going to call us when we receive, when a message is available. So we just wait there and it's going to call us. So since it's going to call us, there's no need for us to sit in a loop. So this is called asynchronous receiving, okay, or asynchronous subscription. Um, there are other ways to say, okay, try and receive a message. And then if I can get it within a few seconds, then, you know, um, let me know. But here we're just going to basically wait and so since we don't need the for loop but we do need to say subscribe and we're going to subscribe to the same subject so intros first big change is that we go from publish to subscribe 
um, because we want to be able to tell NAS that we're interested in messages for the intros subject. The next thing is we don't need any delay because we're not in a for loop anyway. So why put a delay? Now, we're not sending a message. We don't know what the message is. So we should get rid of that part of the statement. And the way we get notified is by getting a callback function, right? So we pass a function in that when a message is available or is received on this subject, call this function and let us handle it or let us know. And so we can do that by saying that we want the message from NATS. And of course, we have to give it a name. So this is going to be M, which is a pointer to that message from NATS. So our function here is going to be called this anonymous function anytime a message shows up on that subject. And again, notice we don't know who sent the message. We don't care. We don't know when it's going to come. And of course, we want to do something interesting with that message. So why not print it out? That's the interesting thing we're going to do in this example. And that's pretty easy. We'll just say, I got a message. And now we need to print out that particular message. But we need to make some room um, on our screen here. And we're going to print out a string. Because in this case, we know that the message that was sent was actually a string. So we'll cast it back as a string. Because remember, it was sent as a byte. So we'll get a slice of bytes. Well, it was sent as a slice of bytes. So we're going to get a slice of bytes, but we want to cast it as a string. And our data is in M, that data. Now, of course, you can imagine NAT's message. There's some other fields in that um, NAT's message structure that we got M. But we're not interested in any other fields right now. We're just interested in the data that was sent. So what does our entire program look like now? Well, essentially, it's, it's this. You know, not very complicated at all. We just sit there and think. Now, notice what our program does. It connects to NAS. If there's an issue connected to the NAT server, we can't find it, the NAT server is not running, whatever, it let us know, and that's it. If we can connect it to foreclose in that connection, and otherwise, um, I'm going to subscribe to this channel, and then it exits. Let's see if this works. And the problem is, if we go run this program, so let's try it. When we run this program, we'll see that, oh, hey, what happened? It just ran, no error, which means it connected to the NAT server, but it exited. Well, that's because when we created our subscription, we did not wait around to get any message. We just ended our program. So, of course, that's what we did. We, we main or ended after we ran the subscribe um, command. So we get, a, we get a subscription, but that function doesn't block. So let's just update our code now, the subscribe code where we're going to let our main program stuck, stick around for a little bit. And the way we can do it, we could put a for loop at the end or wait on a channel that never sends anything or anything like that. But what I'm going to do is simply sleep for like an hour. So if we update our code to say sleep for an hour, then our program will have a long enough time to receive some messages. And let's rerun it now. And you'll see that, hey, we are getting messages. And notice those messages are showing up about every second because they are being sent once every second, one message per second by the publisher. And we can do things like we can stop the publisher, the server, the client says the subscriber is still listening and waiting. We can restart the publisher and the messages start showing up. We can stop the subscriber and then start it back again. And so again, it doesn't matter. Notice though, and we haven't put any number on the message to distinguish them, but you should try that. And you will see that when the publisher sends message, if there are no subscribers, well, those messages are dropped. And when the subscriber do come online, they just get the messages that were sent after they connect, right? So that is smart enough to not try and hold on to messages unless you wanted to, and we haven't reached there yet. We said in the illustration, if there are many, subscribers to a subject, each one of them would get a copy of this message. So let's just start another subscriber. Now this subscriber happened to be the same code, but notice it doesn't matter. It could have been any code that we would have written that says connect to NATS and subscribe to this subject. That's all that is important here. And the publisher is sending one message every second, but notice that message gets duplicated to 
our two subscribers and even if we increase the number of subscribers here to a few thousand nats will work the exact same way all of them regardless of where which machine they're running on anywhere in the world once they can make a connection to the same server they can get um, thing. now it's a little bit more flexible than that because NAT can run as a cluster but we're not going to talk about that right now we'll just say that if they can connect to the same NATS URL okay I think it makes sense to end it here hopefully you like this style of presentation you don't see me type in the code but you still get to see which part of the code change and that hopefully allows you to follow it um, you should end up with the exact same code if you type it as you see the code change um, I think this is a little bit faster. Of course, it takes a lot more time to do all this animation and stuff. Not really the animation, but preparation and copy and paste in the code. But hopefully you like it. Let me know what you think. I think this also makes the videos a little bit shorter, um, even though it takes me much longer to prepare them. And hopefully you like the presentation style. That's the important thing. If you're getting more and this is more understandable and it's better for you at the same time, maybe even a little bit faster in terms of you don't have to see me type and make mistake and correct it all right if you've reached this point and you enjoy the material and you're not subscribed please consider subscribing if you like what you saw if you're already a subscriber thanks for being there and subscribing and being supported and um, coming back and regardless of if you're a subscriber or not please thumbs up the video leave some comments um, let me know if you like it, you don't, what's working, just just, just some comments um, would really help in terms of showing that all this activity um, associated with the video. Uh, take care, stay safe, and see you in the next video soon.